Today we're going to be taking a look at Furch Guitar's line of vintage instruments with the Vintage 2 DSR that I'm holding here, one of the best dreadnoughts I've ever played. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to our channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, head to our Teespring store linked below for custom designed t-shirts. So today, as I stated at the onset, we are taking a look at this Furch Vintage 2 DSR. That stands for Dreadnought Spruce Rosewood. Now, Furch guitars we've reviewed on this channel before, we will continue to do so. We find them to be fantastic instruments. Being built in the Czech Republic in Eastern Europe, we, uh, we get them when we are able to, being shipped overseas, and every time I hold one of these instruments, I am really surprised, taken aback, and, uh, and pleased with the quality, the attention to detail, and really just how good the instruments are. Now, the standard line of Furch instruments are really decidedly modern guitars, modern acoustic electric guitars with modern guitar shapes, electronics, uh, the designs that are being used and so forth. The entire aesthetic is very modern, geared toward people who are kind of finger style players or uh, hybrid, what have you. It's, it's really marketed to that uh, genre of, or subgenre of acoustic guitar music. These, however, are very vintage, hence the name. And I had the chance to try these out for the first time at the Winter NAMM show, and I was immediately blown away. And that is at a NAMM show where you're surrounded by this cacophony of noise. If you've ever been, you know what I'm talking about. And still, the quality of these guitars shone through. So today, we're very excited to be able to showcase these instruments for you. Now, in the Vintage series, there are three different categories. The Vintage 1, the Vintage 2, and the, diff and the Vintage 3. Any of those can be made with a variety of body shapes. There's a dreadnought, there's an OM, there's a parlor, I believe, and then there's also a sloped shoulder dreadnought. As we are able to, we will give you reviews of each of those different body shapes. There's also different wood combinations available and different uh, inlay patterns and, and other materials that are used. This, the Vintage 2, is kind of the sweet spot. And this dreadnought is fantastic. I've been told it's excellent. We, in the future, would like to do a review and comparison of this against some other Dreadnoughts, maybe like a Martin HD-28, because this is definitely on par with an instrument of that caliber. This, in fact, is kind of surprising, and I'll talk a little bit about my experience playing that, but let's, let's talk about the specifics first so you understand what's going on with the guitar. So, of course, it is a Dreadnought shape. It is a Sitka spruce top. It is East Indian Rosewood back and sides. Uh, it is triple A grade wood according to Furch and it still has a lot of their improvements on it like the uh, neck joint that has the insert to keep it from moving and keep the geometry perfect once it's applied to the guitar and, and bolted in place. The uh, bracing in the top is all hand tuned. The finish on it is their UV cured finish although it's a little bit different here. The neck features a one and three quarter inch nut, two and three sixteenths bridge spacing basically kind of makes it ideal for flat picking or finger style guitar. You have your squared off headstock here, again, for that vintage look with the F Furch logo inlaid on it, and these patina gold Goto open gear tunings, which I love. I love them on this guitar, I love them on Martins. They are fantastic, fantastic uh, tuners. Now the finish is a little bit different on this, it's not a satin finish and it's not a full gloss. This is a hand applied finish and it's hand buffed to give it what Furch calls a patina to it. Basically, it's like a semi-gloss. It's somewhere in the middle and it's very, very nice. I think it strikes a nice balance from having something of a vintage kind of aged look to it, but really you could just take it as a 
brand new looking semi-gloss guitar. It's not as shiny as uh, kind of the almost candy coated looks of a lot of guitars, but it's quieter and I think more pleasing to the eye than a typical satin finish would be. Now the bracing that's been done and the hand voicing that's been done on the top is what I'm going to blame for the experience that I get in playing this beautiful guitar. Now you can look at it and be taken back by the simple but elegant inlay done in uh, Perloid, the herringbone binding, and really all of these aesthetics that we typically would see on a vintage style uh, guitar like an old Martin. But this does something that a lot of dreadnoughts that I've played don't do. And that's what surprises me the most. This guitar responds to a light touch. When I first picked up this guitar today, just before we started shooting this video, I began playing it with the flat pick, not very hard, and it responded with so much volume. And that is atypical of most big bodied guitars. In fact, if you've been watching our channel for any amount of time, what I would typically describe to you when it comes to guitar sizes is that a smaller guitar with a light touch can be louder than a big guitar with a light touch because it responds more immediately. That's the whole idea behind something like a small triple O or grand concert size guitar. You don't have to put a lot of energy into it to get a lot of energy out of it. But as you go up, you have a bigger soundboard in a dreadnought or a jumbo size instrument, you have to put more energy into it to get that top moving. That's just not the case here. It's almost like physics is being rewritten by the way they have braced and voiced this top. You get a lot of the things that you would expect from a guitar with spruce and rosewood, which means there's a lot of dynamic range, there's great clarity here, you have fantastic treble, a wonderful rich bass, great overtones, and a scooped mid-range. But you get all that without really having to put a lot into it. And then here's the kicker, it's got headroom, so when you do dig into it, it just gets louder. It's really surprising. And, and just a wonderful instrument all around. So, we could talk about it all day, but I'd rather play for you so you can see for yourself exactly how nuanced, dynamic, and just really powerful with a light touch this guitar could be. Check it out.
So there you have it. This is the Furch Vintage 2 DSR. And it immediately goes to the top of my list of guitars I would like to own. It's definitely up there in my top five. And here are the takeaways. It feels fantastic. The, they call it a slight V. I don't really feel much of it. So it's very, very rounded off V. Neck shape is comfortable. The action is perfect. The feel, the attention to detail, I can't find anything wrong with the guitar. And it just sounds and plays phenomenally. Regardless of what name is on the headstock, what it says on the interior label or on the case, this is a guitar that just about any guitarist would love to own. If you'd like more information about it, go to our website, alamomusic.com, where you can search for this and you can chat live with us. We can help you sort through the myriad options that are out there for guitars and find the instrument that is right for you. Because at the end of the day, that's the point. We are here and we make this video channel simply to help you find the right guitar. So again, if you're new, subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos, comment below, and keep coming back so that we can help you find the right instrument. Because at the end of the day, the best guitar in the entire world is the one that you make music on. So keep doing it and we'll see you next time.